topics. Uh, first, we will begin with a very general background introduction to the Arabic word. So we'll be discussing uh, things like their characteristics and the traits of Arabic words. And then we'll move on to topic number two, which is the adjective or sifa in Arabic. And last but not least, we will be taking a look at the plural and the different types of plurals in Arabic. And the word for plural is al jamar So let's begin, inshallah, with the first topic. All Arabic words are classified into three different types. So if you take an Arabic word, it's going to fall under one of these three categories. It's either going to be an ism, a fi'l, or a harf. Ismun, fi'lun, wa harfun. What's an ism? An ism is a noun or a pronoun. So all nouns or pronouns fall under this category of ism. A fi'l is a verb. Now this includes verbs of all different conjugations and tenses. And this will also include verbs that are in the interrogative or the command form. So basically any type of verb in Arabic, regardless of conjugation or tense, uh, will fall under this category. And lastly, we have the group harf. Now, the best translation is a particle, uh, even though this word is kind of obscure. But just know for now that a harf, uh, this group includes most English prepositions. So things like from, to, um, with, things like that, about, will fall under this category of harf. And we will discuss these two groups in a lot of detail in the upcoming lessons. But in this lesson, we will hone in and focus on the ism. Uh, not so much pronouns, but just nouns in general. So the ism, the plural of which is asma, has four essential qualities. These are four very basic and fundamental characteristics of the ism. And they are gender, number, case ending, and definiteness. For clarification, case ending is not exclusive to the ism. All Arabic words have case endings. And we will learn later on that verbs have case endings as well. But um, for now, whenever you see an ism, uh, whenever you see a noun appear, I want you to think about these four qualities. What's the gender of the word? Um, what's number? What's the case ending? And what's its definiteness? Meaning, is it definite or indefinite? But we'll get to this in a bit. Let's talk about gender for now. So all isma in Arabic have gender. Each ism, whether it's a person, place, or thing, is considered masculine or feminine. The Arabic word for masculine is mudakkar, and the word for feminine is mu'annath. Now in English, gender is typically not ascribed to things that are dead and inanimate. So we don't call things uh, like books, rocks, and cars male or female. We don't typically say in English, I picked up a rock, he was heavy, or she was heavy. Uh, we don't say things like that. But in Arabic, everything is either masculine or feminine. If you can name it, it has a gender. So these things, books, rocks, and cars in Arabic, do have a gender. Uh, let's discuss gender in a bo bit more detail. Let's take the word Muslim, which is, you know, a male adherent or a follower of the Islamic faith. And if you add a tamar buta to the end of the word Muslim, we get Muslimah, Muslimah, which is the female version of a Muslim, namely a female follower of the Islamic faith. A second word, Mu'min, which means a male believer. If we do the same transformation, the same modification, by adding a tamar buta to the end, we get Mu'minah, Mu'minah, which is a female believer. Whoops. Okay. And then last but not least, we have the word Zawj which means husband in Arabic. If we add a tamar buta to the end, we get zawjah, which means wife, the female version um, of this word. So what do we notice? We notice that the tamar buta at the end of these words makes these words feminine, basically. And we can convert the masculine version of the word into its feminine counterpart or feminine form by adding a tamar buta to the end. Now, this isn't always the case. Many words in Arabic do not have a masculine or feminine counterpart. Take, for example, the word qamar, which means moon. This is masculine. Um, you might think that the opposite is sun. So 
if we add Tamar Bulta to get Qamarah, that should mean sun, which is feminine. That's not the case. The word for sun is Ashams, which is an entirely different word. Uh, for example, the word Sa'ah, which means time or hour, is feminine. But you can't drop the Tamar Bulta to get the masculine counterpart. That just doesn't exist. So these words appear and exist by themselves, and they have a fixed gender. Some masculine feminine pairs are composed of entirely different words. Um, for example, the word walad, which means boy, has the opposite, uh, namely girl or bint in Arabic. But notice how we did not add a tamar buta to walad to get waladah. It's just bint. And not all feminine words have a tamar buta. Some are feminine by their meaning. Again, the word bint does not have a tamar buta at the end. But it is feminine because we understand that the word uh, is feminine by meaning. Next, we're going to take a look at number. Each ism in Arabic is numbered and can be singular, dual, or plural. Singular or mufrad uh, refers to one, one copy or one uh, instance, one version of something. The dual is two of something, and the plural, of course, is three or more. So here we have the word kitab which means book. Specifically, it means one book. The dual version is kitabani or kitabaini. So we're taking the singular form and we're adding ani or aini. Ani or aini. Kitabani, which means two books, and kitabaini, which also means two books. Now, what's the difference between these two words? The difference is that they have different case endings. So they both mean two books but they have different grammatical values and functions and we will talk about this in more detail but for now I would encourage you to try to train your ears to listen for these phonetic changes any and any usually refer to the dual version of a particular thing and of course we have three or more which is kutub so kitab is one book kitabani kitabaini two books and the plural three or more is kutub the dual does not exist in the English language, um, so this is a very unique aspect of al Arabia of Arabic. Let's take a look at the third quality, which is case ending. Each ism in Arabic occurring in an Arabic sentence has a specific case, uh, which is basically a variable changing in its ending, a variable change in its ending that is dictated by its function in the sentence, and this ending also reflects. Uh, the function in the sentence. So what does that mean? Basically a case ending is a change in the ending that tells us something about that word's role in a sentence. And in actuality all words, not just asma in Arabic, have case endings. Arabic grammar is pretty much case ending analysis or i'rab. Uh, Arabic grammar answers such questions as for instance, when do we use kitabani, when do we use kitabaini? And i'rab is a very extensive and detailed and technical science or discipline. But inshallah, um, gradually we will explore a great deal of it in the upcoming lessons. Now, you might still be a little confused and not too sure what a case ending means. Let's consider a few examples. We have the words Muslimun, Muslimun, Musliman, and Muslimin. All three words mean Muslim, but notice how the endings are different. We have Adhammatan over here, Fathatan over here, and Akasratan down here. The word Yaktub, which means he writes or he is writing, is a verb. And we can have, again, three different versions. We can have Yaktubu. Yaktuba and Yaktub. Again, notice how the endings are different. We have a Dhamma, a Fatha, and a Sukun. And lastly, we have the words Muslimuna and Muslimina. Both words mean Muslims, but the first one, the first version, has a Waw, and the second one has a Ya. Okay, what's going on here? We see this in the Quran all the time. The words in each set have the same meaning but each word has a different grammatical value and role and that's what the case ending tells us again Arabic grammar answers such questions as when is it appropriate for us to say Muslimun when do we say Musliman 
and when do we say muslimin uh, and in each particular sentence there is only one correct answer um, it's either yaktubu or yaktuba or yaktub um, again even though all three words have the same meaning they have different grammatical roles they play a different function in a sentence and that's basically the gist of case ending analysis or i'rab again it's a very detailed science um, but we will inshallah address all of these issues uh, in future lessons let's talk about the fourth and last quality of asma in arabic each ism is either definite or indefinite so the arabic word for definite is ma'rifa when i say something is definite i mean it is specified we're talking about a, a specific uh, specific item or specific thing so if i say the book right just like in english when i say the book you and i know we're talking about a particular book if i say the book is on the table um you know out of all the books in the world out of millions and millions of books there is just one book that i am referring to on the other hand if a noun is indefinite or nakira it is unspecified when i say a book I'm talking about any book. Over here we have three nouns, all of which are definite. We have al muslimu, al muslima, and al muslimi. Just as a reminder, the case endings are different, but we're not going to worry about that for now. All three nouns mean the Muslim. Notice how we have an alif lam in front of the word. Al Muslimu, Al Muslima, and Al Muslimi. This Alif Lam is what makes the word definite. We can convert all of these words into their indefinite forms by dropping the Alif Lam and adding a Tanween. So Al Muslimu becomes Muslimun, Al Muslima becomes Musliman, and Al Muslimi becomes Muslimin. And these words now mean a Muslim, any Muslim. And the ton wings are highlighted here. So, take home lessons. All asma with the alif lam in front are definite. So, if you see an ism with the alif lam in front, you should immediately remember that it is definite and specified. All asma except proper nouns or names that take a ton wing are indefinite. You can ignore this the stipulation for now. Basically, all most asma that take a tanween at the end are indefinite. And of course, an ism cannot take both a tanween and an alif lam. Now, there are other categories of asma that are considered definite or ma'rifa. These include alam, uh, which are proper names, uh, al dhamair which are pronouns, ism al ishara well, ism al mausul the demonstrative and the relative pronoun, and the mudaf which I'm not too sure how to translate. Uh, anyway, don't worry about these for now, okay? We are going to talk about each of these in more detail later on. For now, just remember that an ism with an alif lam in front is ma'rifa. Okay, at this point, we are going to review um, the four different qualities of asma that we have discussed just a moment ago namely gender, definiteness, number, and case. So let's look at a very short verse from the Qur'an. In verse number 2 of Surah Al-Alaq, Allah says, خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقُ Let's focus on the two um, asma that we have, Al-Insana and Alaqin. Al-Insana and Alaqin. So the word Al-Insana, again, you hear the al in front that tells you the word whoops that tells you the word is ma'rifa or definite the word is also mudhakar which means it's masculine it is mufrad or singular and regarding its case ending which we know nothing about at this point but we can just say it takes a fatah at the end al insana the word ala din we hear the tanween we know that it is indefinite or nakira the word is mudhakar as well masculine uh, regarding its number, it is mufrad, and regarding its case, it takes a kasra at the bottom. Let's take a look at a second example. This is um, a segment taken from the middle of verse 35 in Surah An-Nur. 
Let's focus on the words highlighted here. Al misbahu zujajatin, al zujajatu kaukabun and shajaratin. Al misbahu, we hear the al, we know it is ma'rifa. The word is mudakar, mufrad, and takes a dhamma. Next word, zujajatin, we hear the tanween, we know it is indefinite. Now notice how the word has a tamar buta. This tells us the word is mu'annath or feminine. It is mufrad singular and takes a kasra. az has the alif lam, making a ma'rifah. It has a tamar buta, which makes it mu'annath. Mufrad singular, takes a dhamma. Kawkabun. We hear the tanween, making the word nakirah. It is mudhakkar, masculine. Mufrad singular, and takes a dhamma. Shajaratin has a tamar buta, so the gender is feminine, mu'annath. It is nakirah. Because the marking is a tanween, it is mufrad singular, and it takes a kasra for its case ending. So at this point, um, you should be quite comfortable and familiar with these four different qualities. And every time you look at an ism uh, in the Quran, you should think about its gender, whether it's definite or indefinite. Is it singular, plural, or dual? And what's the case ending it takes? Moving on to topic number two, the plural or al jamr Plurals in Arabic are of three different types. Uh, in other words, every single plural you will encounter will fall under one of these three categories. Number one, we have the broken plural, jamr al taksir Next, you have the sound masculine plural, jamr al mudhakir al-salim. And lastly, you have the sound feminine plural, jamr al muannath al-salim. You should know these words by now, al mudhakir is masculine, mu'annath is feminine, and salim means sound, uh, something that is intact, that is unbroken and sound. So let's begin with the first type of plural, which is the broken plural, jama' taksir. Forming this plural requires breaking apart the singular form, requires dismantling the singular, and then adding in and changing stuff, so modifying it in very strange, uh, so-called strange ways. Strange in my opinion, at least. Let's like, take a look at a few examples here. We have bait, which means house. The plural becomes buyut. So we have a very random wo thrown in there. And we've also changed the vowels on the ba and the ya uh, to two dhammas. Next, we have the word asima, which means capital. Again, the plural becomes awalsim. This is broken because we've split apart the word, we've thrown in a well, we've dropped the term Yeah, we've inserted the well right between the ayn and the alif. Last but not least, we have the word kitab, which means book. The plural becomes kutub. We have dropped the alif and also changed the short vowel markings on the kaf and the ta. So, in summary, these plurals are considered broken because we had to change the singular form in very fundamental ways, oftentimes breaking up the word and modifying uh, the vowels. Although patterns for these plurals do exist, broken plurals must be memorized when you learn the singular form. So the way I learned it was bait buyut, alsima arwelsim, kitab kutub. And that's really the only way to go about it. Next, we have category number two, the sound masculine plural, or jama' al mudhakir salim To form this type of plural, simply add una or ina to the singular. Una or ina. These words are human and masculine in meaning. Let's take three examples. We have muslimun, which is one male believer of the Islamic faith. Mufrad. To make the jama' or the plural, we add una or ina to the end. So we get Muslimuna or Muslimina. Now, again, how are these words different? They both mean Muslims. They're both the plural of Muslim. The difference is in the case ending, which we will not worry about for now. So just learn the two forms, Muslimuna, Muslimina. Both mean Muslims. Example number two, we have the word Fasiq, which means sinful or immoral, someone who is sinful or immoral. To make it the plural form, we add una or ina. Fasiquna, fasiquina. 
which means um, men who are sinful or immoral. Lastly, we have a volume, a male individual who's unjust or a male oppressor. To get the plural, again, we do the same modification. We add una or ina. We get volumuna and volumina. These are sound because the singular remains intact. Notice how the word Muslim still appears in the plural. The word fasiq appears and the word volume appears. We are only making very simple changes to the ending, adding una or ina. And the last type of plural is called the feminine, sound feminine plural, jama'a mu'annath as-salim. To form this, we simply drop the tamar butah at the end of the feminine word of the feminine singular and we add at to the singular. We add at, which is an alif and a ta. These words are feminine but not necessarily human. Let's take a look at a few examples. We have muslimah, muslimah which is a single female believer of the Islamic faith. If we drop the tamar buta and add at to the end, we get muslimat, muslimat. We have the word muhsana, which is a chaste woman. Again, dropping the tamar buta and adding at, we get muhsanat, muhsanat. And then this last example is a non-human example. We have the word ayah, which means a sign or a verse in the Quran. Dropping the tamar buta and adding at gives us ayat, ayat. These are sound again, just like the sound masculine plurals, because the singular form remains intact, pretty much, except for the tamar buta being dropped off. Uh, everything else in the singular appears in the plural. We are only making very simple changes to the ending, adding at. Some feminine words that end in tamar buta have broken plurals, so watch out. Uh, for example, the word surah, the plural is suwar. This is broken. It is not surat. So pay attention to these um, and make sure to memorize this. Now let's take a look at some examples from the Quran to review the plurals. So over here we have a number of plurals taken from various different verses in the Quran. We are going to talk about the type of plural, the category it falls under, and then the singular form. So in verse number one of Surat Al-Kafirun 109, Allah says, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ the plural is kafirun, disbelievers. We hear the un that tells us it's a sound masculine plural. Jamar al mudakir salim. It's easy for us to figure out the singular. You just drop the un at the end to give the kafir. In verse number one of surah number 105, um, Allah says, Alam uh, means companions this is an example of a jama' taqsir a broken plural the singular is sahib in verse number two of surah number 102 at we have hatta uh, zurtumul maqabir maqabir which means graves this is again another example of a jama' taqsir a broken plural the singular is maqbar in surah number 16 verse 44 this is surah nahl i believe we have the verse Bil Bayinat wa Zubur Al Bayinat. We hear the at that tells us it's a Jama al Mu'annath al Salim, a sound feminine plural. And to recover the singular, we drop the Alif Nata, we add Tamar Bulba to get Al Bayina. Al Bayina. In the next verse, the same surah, we have As Sayyat. Sayyat. Same deal here. It's a Jama al Mu'annath al Salim. And the singular is as sayyah In surah number 24, verse 27, we have buyut. This is an example of a jama' taqsir. The singular is bayt. And then the last four examples come from the last ayah of surah al-ahzab, where Allah says, لِيُعَذِّبَ اللَّهُ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ وَالْمُشْرِكَاتِ We have al-munafiqina. We hear the ina. This tells us the word is a jama'a mudakir salim, a sound masculine plural. 
and the singular form is al munafiq just the front part al munafiqati is a jama' al mu'annath al salim singular is al munafiqah al munafiqah and then we have al mushrikina jama' al mudhakkar al salim al mushrik and last but not least we have al mushrikat which is jama' al mu'annath al salim the singular is, is al mushrika so al munafiqina is the male hypocrites al munafiqat the female hypocrites al mushrikina the male polytheists and al mushrikat the female polytheists okay this is the last subject for today in this lesson is al sifa the sifa is a modifier that follows the ism it describes and it agrees with the ism in four fundamental ways and they are case number definiteness and gender now it's not a coincidence that I chose to talk about these four characteristics uh, just a few moments ago because in order to understand the sifa we must understand agreement on four different levels on these four different levels so let's take an example we have the phrase al-hukumatu al-jadidatu al-hukumatu al-jadidatu al-hukuma means the government al-jadida means the new the new government Let's pay attention to these four different traits. We have al in front of both words, in front of the ism and the sifa, telling us that both are definite. We have a tal manu at the end of the sif, uh, at the end of the ism and the sifa, both are feminine muannath. We have the same case ending on both words, adlamma, and both are singular. So here it is: both are feminine, definite, singular, and both take dhammas. There is agreement in these four different regards. Example number two, we have the phrase Wajulin Bakhilin, which means stingy man. Again, we have agreement in the gender, both are masculine, both are indefinite with a tanween, both are singular and both take a kasra. Now I want to bring your attention to one um, very important observation and that is to call the modifier a sifa in Arabic grammar we must must have the following form and the form is a big house okay where the adjective is strung to the noun the ism and the sifa are together in this particular structure the arabic equivalent would be baytun kabirun a big house baytun is the mausuf that's the thing being modified or described a sifa is the adjective the descript descriptor again we have to have this form baytun kabirun in order for us to call kabirun sifa we can have other forms okay if we have other forms the adjective is a sifa in a general sense but not a sifa in the grammatical sense okay consider these two forms we have the house is big and the house was big there's actually a difference between these two sentences and this phrase up here we call big a sifa in this case but not in these two cases and that's true because the Arabic equivalents of these two sentences are here we have al-baytu kabirun the house is big or kan al-baytu kabirun the house was big notice how over here we don't have agreement in definiteness and over here we don't have agreement in definiteness or case ending and that's because kabirun in these cases carry different grammatical values Okay, so we don't call kabir the sifa. In this case, we actually call it uh, the khabar, and over here it's called the khabar kana, both of which we will discuss later on. But just remember, an adjective is a sifa in Arabic grammar only if you follow this pattern, baytun kabirun. Now let's review the adjective or the sifa by taking examples from the Quran. I want you to pay attention to agreement again in these four fundamental aspects in case, definiteness, number, and gender. In Surah An Nur, verse number 35, we have the phrase Shajaratin Mubarakatin, a blessed uh, tree. Shajaratin Mubarakatin. Gender, both of these words, the ism and the sifa, are feminine. Mu'annaf. We are talking about a uh, mufrad or singular. And both are indefinite because of the tanween, both are nekirah. And the case ending both, notice how both take 
a kasratan, a kasra at the bottom. Example number two, we have from Surah Ibrahim, Surah number 14, verse number two, the phrase Ada bin Shadid, Ada bin Shadidin. When we recite this verse, it's uh, We end on a sukun. But if you look carefully, you will see that there is um, this short vowel on the bottom, which is not read because when you stop, you stop on a sukun. Anyway, both of these words are mudakar, masculine. Both are singular mufrad. Both are indefinite nakirah, the tanween. And then both take the same case, which is the kasrah. In Surah Nahl, Surah number 16, verse number 67, we have the phrase Rizqan Hasanan. Rizqan Hasanan. Both are mudakar, mufrad, nakirah, and both take a fatha. Uh, example number four in Surah at teen Wahadha al baladil amin. We have al baladil amin. Both are mudakar, both are mufrad, both are nakirah. Uh, sorry, both are ma'rifa, because the other flam in front, making both words definite, and both take the same case ending, namely a kasra. Lastly, we have kalimatin khabithatin. Kalimatin khabithatin. Both are mu'annaf, feminine, because of the tamar rabuta. Both are singular mufrad, both are nakira, indefinite, and both take the same case ending, a kasra. So that brings us to the end of lesson number one. Here is a quick review. Every Arabic word is either an ism, a noun or a pronoun, a fi'l, a verb, or a harf, a particle. Every ism is either definite, ma'rifa, or indefinite, nakira. Every ism is also either mudhakar, masculine, or mu'anna, feminine. And also, every ism is numbered. It can be singular, mufrad, dual, muthanna, or plural, jama'. Arabic words have case endings, and these case endings tell us something about their functions in the context of sentences. Plurals fall under one of um, these three categories. They can be jama' taksir, broken, jama' al mudakir salim, sound masculine, or jama' al mu'annath salim, sound feminine. Lastly, in the phrase baytun kabirun, 